gentlemen, here we go with the tie breaks. It is Fnatic of Side TT1, which is no longer actually Fnatic TT1. He's actually MTW TT1, so congratulations to him. Oh, really? And he's playing it up against the Dignitas. Yeah, man. Should be pretty crazy. I mean, Select uh, such a high-level player. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's really, I think he's pretty much considered one of the top foreigners right now. Uh, he's just such a solid Terran player uh, with great multitask and good mechanics. Yep. So, uh, you know, I'm a little bit worried for TT1 because um, I, I maybe, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like TT1 is more considered um, probably like uh, high tier for NA, but kind of more like mid tier in the pro scene. So, you know, I feel like Select is probably the favorite coming into this match, and uh, TT1's oh, got his would, work cut out for I him. would definitely say he's the favorite going into this match. I mean, TT1 just does not have, he has, doesn't have really the posted results yeah. to uh, compare to someone like Select. Who I just didn't, didn't want to sound like offensive, man, because I know he's on your team and everything. But well, he sounded well, like he was. You, him, you, you know, was, know, he's sorry. My, he's my good he friend. Was but, your, um, yeah, your yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, he doesn't have the results uh, to really yeah. post like Select does. You know, Select, Select is, is so just impressive. a monster. But TT1. He is like a big practice partner with a lot of people. He is one of the players that people go to to, you know, learn. I know Dodoro is one of the players that is really learning from him and Kiwikaki. On top of that, I know he's been beating a lot of really good players. His his practice partners are now, you know, players like Demaga, really really strong people. And um you know, I feel like we could see upsets here. Yeah, man. It's definitely a possibility. I mean, we are on dual site. Uh, and this map is very two base oriented. It's like almost impossible to get third base on this map. Uh, we very, very, ever rarely see games go past two base on this map. Happens every once in a while, but usually ends up being a loss for the person that goes for that third base. So uh, most likely, you can be seeing either a one or two base all in from either of these players. And uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see that from DT1, given the fact that he, uh, you know, probably knows that he is, uh, you know, the underdog in this matchup. But it looks like we're missing a two axe from Select with gas. So very standard opening. This is just one of the safest openings and most standard openings you can be doing uh, TVP. It's not like all in, like a one one one. Uh, it still allows you to get up enough units that you can defend against any type of Protoss all in, uh, like some type of four gate. Um, but unlike something like a three axe, it will allow you to get your command center up at a reasonable time. We do see that he's going oh, over to make his first. tech labs first. Wow. Oh, no, no. Okay, reactor. Okay, good. He I was about to say, up. yeah. It's really That's weird uh, to see a tech lab. The reason is, you know, the reactor just gets you more units. And now with the huge stim, well, now with the huge stim, that was changed forever ago. But the only upgrade you can get very, very fast is the concussive shell. Or combat shield, yeah. Or combat shield, but even that, that's 110 seconds. Right. It's quite a bit. Um, you know, Combat or Concussive Shell is the closest one that you can get that really does a lot of damage, in my opinion, in this early game stage. And um, just getting that Marine count is easier. And then you, get, you delay your, your Concussive Shell a little bit later. Yeah, it's also just a little it. bit safer against you know uh, any type of any type of cheese against a Protoss player when you have more Marines available. Uh, you know, Marauders are great against certain types of builds from a Protoss, but uh, you know they're not good against others like you know types of Void Ray play, uh, Mortal based play. So if you have more Marines, it just makes you uh, you know uh, just more well rounded. You can deal with something like three gate Void Ray. You can deal with something like you know double Immortal War Prism drops, etc. So. Um, I do like that decision to go for the reactor first, uh, and look at that concussive is about to complete here. Of course, the fastest upgrade in the game, uh, about 60 seconds, I believe, uh, only 50-50. But it looks like we're going to be seeing a 3-gate expansion here from TT1, uh, probably going to put on some pressure as well. 3-gate, um, now we haven't seen 3-gate expand that often lately on um, PVT, simply because it does kind of get hard countered by 1-1-1. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but it uh, looks like he's just a little bit confident that it's not going to be a 1-1-1. Unfortunately, that probe does get taken out by those Marines, and he hasn't seen a Marauder yet. So um, if I were TT1, I'd actually be very, very scared that 1-1-1 could be a possibility for what he's up against. I mean, he didn't even see if his opponent had gas or not. Um, so he is taking a very big risk by going for this 3-gate, but you know what, it probably will pay off for him because this will help him just defend against the 2 racks, but never mind, oh my god, it's going to be a 4-gate from TT1, but a very delayed 4th gateway. So I mean, his warp gate tech is already completing and his 4th gate just started, so won't have that for a little while. Uh, do you think he did this as a response since he saw those m units moving out from Select? Yeah, it might be. Something like going 3-gate or 4-gate with double gas actually counters any form of 2-gate or 3-gate, anything above two that. 2-racks or 3-racks? Or 2-racks yeah. or 3-racks. Uh, There's that force that goes down, but he doesn't close oh, he misses it off completely. Oh, yeah. He allows that Marine to get out. That's uh, unfortunate. That is, yeah, unfortunate, man. Uh, you want to take any any little uh, amount of damage you can do to your opponent. You want to get there. And the Reaper comes in the back from Select. Nice choice to get that Reaper that early on. Does get two kills, but oh, it does get taken out. Might have been a better idea maybe to just keep trying to kill off as many probes uh, while he was still alive as opposed to try to run away. Yeah. But uh, hindsight is 20-20, man, so... 
Uh, he did get at least two probe kills there. That's going to help him out a little bit. Also, uh, push T21 back. He had to defend against that. Might have wanted to move out immediately. I mean, he already has his forward pylon set up. So it will delay the time that T21 can use to attack. But with double gas, uh, generally what the sense of doing is you just contain your Terran opponent at the ramp with the sentries for a very, very long time uh, until the Terran can essentially get medevacs out. So uh, Select could be in just a little bit of trouble here, uh, you know, if T21 goes for that. But with four gates instead of three, I don't know, maybe he'll just, uh, maybe he'll just put on a lot of pressure as opposed to expanding. But oh my gosh, a Ghost Academy is on the way from Select. Whoa. If he can use those to EMP those sentries, he will be able to move down his ramp and uh, completely avoid this contain. Yeah, I think that would be very beneficial. For now, TT1 looks like he wants to push up a little bit. He doesn't have a lot of sentries, and also his uh, forward pylon is all the way over here on the left-hand side, so he won't be able to reinforce too fast. Nexus is going down for him, so he's just continuing with the Mac. Whoa, he canceled it. Whoa. It was misplaced. Oh. oh. Okay. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Uh, 100 minerals down the drain from doing that. Um, but, you know, not the biggest deal. He's still containing Select. Now, Select is double, uh, is able to double Mule here and double SCV produce if he wants, but actually he's just completely cutting SCVs for the moment. So, Select uh, just... Oh, no, there, there we go. Now he's resuming SCV production, but he already has two Ghosts on the way, man. No Mobius Reactor, so it won't have that energy as they come out. But once they get up to, uh, you know, 75 energy, uh, TT1 is actually not preparing for this at all. He's got all the sentries stacked up, man. So, a one EMP and all those sentries will not have energy, and he'll be able to uh, run down the ramp and uh, kill off that army. So yeah, T21's going to have to be really, really careful and make sure he doesn't get caught off guard. such a weird timing, honestly, to have ghosts out at this time. Yeah. I mean, you don't normally see nine-minute ghosts timing. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm sure TT1 isn't even assuming that this is going to happen for now. He's just going to force field that ramp and back wow, up he's for leaving. a little bit. I'm surprised, man. Well, uh, most portals I see try to hold this contain at least until maybe like the 11 minute mark when, uh, you know, Medivax are coming out. He throws another force build. Most of the army has already gotten out and he kills off that sentry. So select moving out uh, right at the right time. And he does have those two ghosts. So he's going to go for a counterattack for sure here. Uh, and it could be really difficult for a TT1 to deal with because uh, he just has so many sentries that he's relying on. Look at that. Four more sentries back at his uh, natural. So he's going to be up to six sentries here. And if he does have them stacked up, he did not see those ghosts yet. So if he leaves them stacked up, because uh, he's maybe not, you know, doesn't realize that that's on the way. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe like two EMPs and the uh, game could be over. A lot of trouble, man. Um, but back when you're saying, actually, Select has a build that he did ever since the beta where we get out 10 minute or pre 10 minute medevacs. Yeah, he would go two racks uh, factory two in the racks medevacs. Factory yeah, you're and right. Then, and then starport. So I think that's why, and both these players actually practice all the time. So I think. TT1 knows that he, that's why he backed out at the uh, 9 minute 20 second mark. All right, now all of his sentries, oh no. uh, they're split up a little bit, but they're two stacked up on the side. Their EMP goes down. Will he get another one, though? Some of the sentries still have energy, as well as that uh, Immortal still has shields right now, but Select is doing a great job kiting backwards. He needs to target fire down that Immortal, though. There he goes, trying to pick it off. Oh, no, he doesn't quite kill it off. There we go. Last shot goes off, but it looks like Select's army has actually been taken out yeah. very nicely. TT1 did a great job in defending that. He still has a lot of stalkers, and look at that. Two sentries live in that as well. Another Immortals coming in here, and that... That actually delays Select's tech quite a bit. Yeah. Now, I do want to say, it, uh, you know, TT1 isn't so far ahead at this point because he has given up a lot not getting any form of AoE. He needs to consistently have that, just that sheer unit advantage in every fight. And on a map like Dual Sight, I mean, you don't have the most, you know, open areas, especially when you're attacking into someone. So uh, I, I don't know what he's going to do with this. I would I would assume he w actually wants to expand afterwards. Well, you know, it's possible to try to go bust down uh, Select since he knows he took out, took out a lot of Select's army and he also has these Immortals which can bust down, uh, you know, bunkers pretty darn efficiently. Um, but, you know, in that last fight, I think Select actually missed uh, one of his EMPs there. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Sentry still had energy, the uh, the Immortals still had shields. So that m probably was the number one thing that caused him some problems in that last engagement. But uh, I'm a little bit worried for Select now since TT1's army is uh, pretty scary here and Select doesn't yeah. have a single bunker. He does have quite a few Marauders, but not that many Marines, which are usually where you're getting the majority of your DPS from. Of course, these Marauders are just going to get uh, trained pretty hard by these uh, these Immortals, man. So I am just a little bit worried for Select, uh, you know, if he can hold off this attack from TT1. Um, but I don't know, man. We'll have to see. It looks like TT1 setting up the forward pile, and he's getting ready for this engagement. Yep. Uh, and I'm really surprised we don't see an expansion, but here we go. It looks like the Stalkers are going to initiate right now. Zealots are behind that, but he has two Immortals in there. Are there any ghosts out here? Yes, there are. Is he going to get this EMP down? It's only two energy away. Oh and now God. an EMP is coming down. Uh, oh, where is it? 
There it is on the Stalkers and one of the Immortals. But oh, the Force Fields are catching the SCVs and the entire army back in that mineral line. A lot of them are stuck on the ramp as well. Oh Not a good God, positioning man. here from Select. This is fantastic from TT1, but the Immortal goes down. He's trying to target for the other, target for the other Immortal right now. It's getting low. It goes down. Now there are no more Zealots to support these Stalkers. Pure Stalker against Immortal is not efficient at all. And oh my God, the tides have turned and Select maybe it'll take out this entire army from TT1. TT1 just lost everything, and that is not what you want to happen. When you're going a mass gateway army, you cannot oh, try to replenish. Oh, no, man. It's the worst possible situation, because now, where is his advantage? Right. He doesn't have That's one anymore. Thing, man. He did not transit. He didn't set up a transition. It was almost like an all-in, like yeah. a two-base all-in there. Exactly. He didn't have any upgrades, no Forge, no Colossus tech on the way, no Twilight tech on the way. Literally no transition there. So TT1 is actually going to be pretty darn far behind here. He's just adding on that fourth gas now. He's adding on even more gateways here. So he's actually go going up to, uh, it looks like seven gateways here off two base with that Robo still pumping out Immortals and never did take that third base. So uh, Select is, uh, he is behind on food, but he at least has plus one on the way. And once plus one finishes, as well as, uh, you know, with the, the addition of those ghosts and metavax, uh, you know, he could be in a pretty darn pos uh, good position coming now, into the I game. Now, I understand here. where TT1 is coming from. He was saying, okay, my opponent failed so hard yeah. in that early attack. Let me go and just counterattack. But then he failed so hard. So right. they're literally flip-flopping their advantages back and forth. Yeah, I think he got a little too impatient, man. Yeah, me too. He had his forward pylon, but he didn't wait for it to complete and get a warp of units. He mm -hmm. went straight in for the attack. And you need zealots, man. Yeah, you not need zealots. zealots. Uh, and I think in that attack, he only had like three, something yeah. very obscene. And he warped in reinforcements, stalkers instead of zealots, man. Yeah. I think if he had actually warped it, if that that warp in that he had, the single warp in during the fight, if that had been zealots instead of stalkers, I actually think TT1 could have just won the game right there. He had so many stalkers, so much DPS already. He did not need more, but he didn't have those units to tank for those marauders uh, while his stalkers were doing the DPS. So that's actually dangerously close for Select in this game. He man. still has a pretty scary force at this point, but Select has two ghosts in an army. Are we seeing any? more medevacs actually join in no so he's not actually developing his medevac count at all uh, but still it's a very scary army emp goes oh, off nice. beautiful shots and they get most of no all of the sentries and the immortals is it going to be enough though oh it That's will be andre yeah, there, there are, are four no medevacs man yeah four medevacs are making a huge difference and there are no more zealots left alive he needs to target fight the immortals there goes one immortal he's trying to get the second one but it still has its shields there it goes down immediately here come the reinforcements will he have enough though the reinforcement stalkers are actually doing quite a bit of damage to select army right now but here come his reinforcement marauders and marines and he might be able to pick off this army now two zealots have come in but he's cutting backwards on the bottom right the, st uh, the immortals on the top left though are keeping the stalkers away Perfect micro by select there. You know, that was actually amazing using a couple units to cut away from the Zealots, but the other ones to make sure that the Stalkers had to be cutting back away from the Marauders so they exactly. couldn't be doing that DPS while the Zealots, cut, uh, you know, were tanking for them. A really good play there by select. Yeah. And TT1 uh, did do the right decision by trying to get rid of that medevac count. If you can do that, right. then it's just regular gateway units against regular barracks units, the and you're, have it's kind of manageable. So like I said, 1-0, man. Oh, yeah. He and he has 1-1 one one on the way. TT1 is 0-0 zero, zero, no upgrades on the way, no additional tech on the way. How Ticking many times? Time bomb, man. Exactly. That's exactly How many times have we seen a Protoss player go pure gateway army? Uh, he has Immortals too, but mostly a pure gateway army with no upgrades against Terran infantry. It doesn't work. It, unfortunately, is just not cost efficient almost ever. Um, you really need the upgrades to be cost efficient with gateway units against uh, infantry yep. units or you need to mix in those colossi or archons or templar so right now select is taking the top left expansion with that gold base now if you put mules on there hey he just becomes so much more yeah. efficient you're going to be rolling in the dough so fast so tt1 um you know as you said that plus one he maybe has one more minute to actually do something in this game yeah you don't want to like rolling one around one like one a banding man no. like he's just gonna be rolling all over that cash like actually if you're rolling like a band, then you'd probably explode the cash. I uh, wouldn't have any of those minerals left over, man. That'd oh be a yeah. sad day. That would be a sad day. But sad. Select actually just poking around. I like that he's being very active on the map. He's checking for ninja expansions from TT1 with his army and with this floating factory going all over the place. He's actually just sending that back and forth between the third and the possibility of a fourth. But TT1 is not going for anything like that. He's not taking an expansion, nor is he still uh, you know, adding on any type of tech or upgrades. He's just going purely all in here. Look at that. Even pulling his probes to help him out with the engagements as his mains might out anyways. And his naturals at full saturation, so they wouldn't help in the natural anyways. So, I mean, I guess it's a smart move in terms of why not bring them with your army as opposed to having them do nothing. But uh, I still feel like the better choice would be oh to take God. that third base. And look at that TT1 snipe 
tries to snipe one of the ghosts, but uh, the ghost gets the EMP off before he's able to actually do anything. Probes are in this army, of course, and here we go. The big attack has started. Guardian Shield is going to be placed. EMPs need to go off. Yes, they do get nice. scattered all across the centuries. Both the mortals, too. The mortal, That's yeah. That's so and important, man. This, this SCP has to come here with engagement, too, man. This is going to be so scary. A couple forces went out, but it's not enough. Oh, my God. Slack moves forward with his entire army and decimates the army from T21. That was insanely one-sided, and the, the power GD comes out. of the 1-1, one, one, man. Yeah. You're right. One, one. Look at that timing. When did 1-1 one, one complete? I'm actually going to check there. How recent was that 1-1 one, one in com you know, completing before that attack happened? Well, It was like a 30 seconds ago. Yeah, it was at least plus a little plus. while. Uh, yeah, yeah. About 20, 20 seconds. Yeah, it 20, was. 30 seconds. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's that's pretty awesome for Select to get that timing out. Um, very, very close. TT1, of course, didn't know about that. But, I mean, if he had attacked just a little bit earlier, uh, you know, with this, this two base all in. I mean, I'm just looking at it. Oh, my God. He's actually kind of moving around with his army, waiting for the probes to arrive. And then 1-1 one, one completes. And then he goes for the engagement after 1-1 one, one is completed. Yeah. Such a big advantage there from Select. 1-1 one, one against 0-0 zero, zero gateway units. Um, so, you know, nice win for Select in this tiebreaker phase. So, just to let you guys know uh, how this will work is uh, it's going to be a round robin because actually TT1, Select, and Huangson are all tied for the playoff tiebreakers. So, we are going to do a round robin. It now is TT1's turn and uh, to pick his opponent. To right? pick his opponent. Right. And I do believe that he's repicked Select. Yeah, he has. He That's says shocking. he wants revenge, man. Yeah, well, you know, I guess it's understandable since, uh, you know, he did almost win that game. There were a couple moments yeah. there where TT1 was so, so close to winning and Select just barely held on by a thread, man. Um, so uh, maybe TT1's thinking to himself, all right, I'm going to go back in and if something like that happens again, I'll just be able to uh, go ahead and make make the Zealots this time instead of the Stalkers or you know something else, maybe a better transition instead of just that pure two base all in with gateway units. Um, but I, I still think it's a little bit shocking. I think it would have been better. I mean, because the way this is going to work, if a player goes 0-2, that's it. They're done with the playoffs, and they get bottom seed. Yeah. So if he loses this next game against Select again, he will be bottom seed. And I would have thought he would much rather play against Huangsen um, rather than playing against a Select who is just such a high-level player. But that's his choice, man. So uh, that means we'll be moving on to that next game. Yep. So catch us there.